So our final snippet for this week is going to look at the U.S. role in the the collapse of communism, the, the the gradual victory of the U.S. in the in the Cold War. We looked in on the East European uh, context um, in the Kramer piece that we had for the reading for for this week. But the backdrop to this, or maybe the starting point for this, is is in Afghanistan. So here's William Casey, the DCI. Um, Casey is convinced that um, uh, the Soviets can be defeated in Afghanistan, provided that uh, the uh, the anti-occupation forces called the Mujahideen, which are primarily, though not exclusively, an Islamist uh, resistance group, um, are, are, are provided with, uh, with military assistance. And so he's very conscious. He doesn't want US troops on the ground in Afghanistan. There's still this, this so-called Vietnam syndrome, but he's eager for covert aid. The question is how to get this through uh, Congress. And, and Casey, who is an ultra conservative Catholic, you know, very, very doctrinaire, ultimately works uh, closely with this man, Charlie Wilson, who was a, a conservative uh, Democrat from Texas, but also someone who um, was not a doctrinaire Catholic in terms of his uh, his personal uh, life. You can see his his staff. Uh, um, this this is a different era in in Congress. I mean, this would now be obvious uh, sexual harassment, but it's it's not seen that way at the uh, at the time. Wilson is a um, is an interesting figure in that he's. Um, He's he's engaged with international affairs. He he he, he sees himself as quite significant. He's he's uh, he's on a, a committee called the Appropriations Committee, so he has some influence in terms of how money is spent. Um, he's convinced, um, in large part, because he's dating a woman who a Houston socialite who has been hired by by the Pakistanis to serve as their uh, consul general in Texas. Um, that uh, the Af U.S. aid to the Afghans is going to be crucial. So eventually, you get this odd couple alliance between Casey, this doctrinaire Catholic, and, and Wilson, who you know um, had, shall we say, looser uh, uh, mores, um, in which the U.S. starts funding these uh, Mujahideen uh, rebels, and in particular, they 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 supply them with with this weapon called Stinger uh, anti aircraft. Uh, missiles, which uh, uh, eliminate the Soviet advantage in the air. You know, the, the Afghan resistance was very effective at fighting the Soviets on the ground, but the Soviets had pretty much unfiltered uh, control of the air. Once the Stingers come in, um, that that evens the score. The problem here is that the U.S. largely coordinates this aid, because again, there's this fear of putting U.S. troops on the ground, largely coordinates this aid through the Pakistanis. Um, who have, as we've all discovered over the last uh, several years, have their own agenda in Afghanistan. And so the long-term complications of this are, are massive, but in the short term, this looks like a really clever policy. Soviet control starts to weaken in Afghanistan by 1987. The Soviets are only in control of this, this kind of red area here on the map. So basically a bunch of cities um, and then the Afghan-Soviet uh, uh, border. This war starts bleeding the Soviet economy uh, dry. Um, and in 1985, when the latest of the, the Soviet uh, uh, leadership um, uh, passes away, um, the Soviets who are basically on their way out of Afghanistan install as the new uh, general secretary of the Communist Party, the head of the Soviet Union, a younger uh, figure, someone with a reputation as something of a reformer named Mikhail Gorbachev. And Gorbachev's uh, 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 policies are known as glasnost and, and perestroika. Glasnost basically is he wants to create a, a more open society, allow a degree of civil freedom, even though the Communist Party is going to remain the only party in the Soviet Union. And perestroika is a policy of promoting economic reform as a way of jumpstarting what was then a moribund, uh, a moribund um, uh, economy. Margaret Thatcher, who's the Prime Minister of, of Britain, believes that Gorbachev is a, is a man with whom the West can deal. Reagan is initially more skeptical. Um, he, here he is in 1987 uh, in Berlin, uh, delivering a, a fairly hard line uh, address that, that includes a, a very famous Reagan line. So let's take a listen. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. 
So this line becomes a famous line in the uh, as we move towards the end of the Cold War. But what Reagan discovers is that the the Soviet Union does seem to be genuinely opening up. The Soviets invite American businesses to invest in the Soviet Union. This is the first McDonald's um, in Moscow. This is opening day of, of McDonald's. You see all these people in Moscow line, lined up. In, in a society where there was enormous food scarcity, there, there's, there seems to be this period of, uh, of excitement. The Reagan administration and then ultimately the, the H.W. Bush administration, when Bush replaces Reagan after the 88 election, um, uh, are, are interested in, in arms negotiations deals with the, the Soviet Union. From the U.S. side, the goal is to stabilize the Cold War. From the Soviet side, they want to cut their defense budget because defense is taking up such a, a large segment of the uh, of the Soviet economy. And similarly, Gorbachev wants to distance or, or wants to get Soviet troops out of Eastern Europe um, because he, he it, you know, this is extremely expensive. Basically, his goal here he wants to cut costs uh, to to allow the, the the communist Soviet state to survive. His problem is that he badly um, uh, miscalculates. What he assumes is that, you know, the Soviets have been running things in Eastern Europe for, for more than 40 years by this point, that the communist parties have enough popular support that uh, they'll be able to survive even without this Red Army Soviet infrastructure on the ground. But it turns out that's not the, uh, the case. In Poland, uh, Gorbachev pressures the Polish government, this is uh, General Jaruzelski, remember him, uh, to, to end the martial law. Lech Walesa, the, the head of solidarity, is, is freed. There are um, uh, uh, open elections in Poland. Um, the expectation, the, the, the way it's set up is that the communists are almost certain to win because the majority of the seats are, are appointed rather than elected. But solidarity wins all of the seats that are open for election and a few of the communists then defect. Um, they see what way the wind is blowing. Um, and solidarity becomes the dominant power in Poland. And Gorbachev agrees that this non-communist government can, um, can take over. Even worse situation from the Soviet perspective in East Germany. This is a photo of Gorbachev with Eric Honecker, the hardline longtime leader of East Germany. Gorbachev tells Honecker that he needs to reform, uh, adopt the principles of Glasnost and Perestroika. Honecker says no. Gorbachev says fine, we'll sort of push you aside and he's, uh, and he's replaced. Over the next several months, there are attempts to, to, to find some way to, to create a, a, a vibrant German state. Ultimately, this fails. Um, the, the, the communist leadership of East Germany, um, which has opened, you know, it's, it's tried to adopt the Gorbachev reforms, um, uh, makes a mistake. It, it, it's, 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 uh, it announces that um, it, it's, it's made a decision to allow limited West German, uh, limited East German travel to West Germany through checkpoints on the Berlin Wall. It's going to do, it's, it's going to do this the next day. The hope is to, that that might provide a degree of popularity for the communists. But the implementation of the policy is screwed up. The border guards believe that the borders are simply open. Um, and in that night, the Berlin Wall falls. You have these you know, thousands of East Germans who stream, uh, who stream across the, the border. And the collapse of the Berlin Wall effectively symbolizes the end of the Cold War and the collapse of Soviet control over Eastern Europe, although not necessarily uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union itself, which is what we'll be looking uh, more at um, in the snippets uh, next, uh, next week. So in the meantime, I uh, hope all is well, um, and I'll see people in, in discussion sections this week.